Good afternoon. Good to see each and every one of you joining us tonight for our Good Friday service and for the special meeting that that holds. And we want to start tonight by just worshiping together and lifting up our voices in song. So would you stand as we begin worship tonight with a song called There Is a Fountain. a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins and sinners plunge beneath the blood lose all their guilty stains lose all their guilty stains lose all their guilty stains seated tonight. We're going to welcome up Pastor Trey for a welcome in prayer. Well, good evening. It is so good together this evening to celebrate Good Friday. There's only one reason we call it good, and that's because of Sunday, but we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves this evening. Tonight is about reflecting on what Christ has done for us, and uh, we have a wonderful Savior, don't we? We really do. What love we've been shown. Later in the service, as you can probably tell and you probably knew, we are going to have, uh, we're going to observe the Lord's Supper. And you'll receive a, a, uh, well, I'll show you one here if I can get down here. You probably can't see it, but the bread and the cups all in one thing. It might be a little different than you've received it. I want to tell you about it now so that this doesn't (laughs) interrupt our reflection on the Lord later. But you'll, you'll pull off the clear plastic cover on top to access the little wafer. And then there's grape juice in there as well. If you haven't done that, you'll see it when it comes to you. But the Lord's Supper is a serious time. Uh, we get to rejoice over what Christ has done for us. But it is a time where we reflect as believers. And this is a meal for believers only, those who have trusted in the Lord and then followed Him in believers' baptism. And if you haven't done that yet, I would encourage you to do so. The Lord invites you to trust in Him for salvation and follow Him in baptism, unashamed to proclaim that you are His. But this meal is a family meal. The family of God, the redeemed, those who have been saved. It's a meal that we approach with great seriousness. We uh, make sure our hearts are right and, and um, confess any unconfessed sin before the Lord. And really, what I want to do, even before we get to the point in the service where we have the meal, I want us to do that now. Uh, that way we worship through Him through this entire evening with hearts that are 
truly ready to worship. We need to be ready to worship, amen? And we're only worthy to worship only because of the blood of Jesus Christ. And so what I'd like to do at this time is, well, I want to welcome you. I'm glad you're here, but I want us to all just go before the Lord. Let's, let's spend a moment in silent prayer, and then I'll pray as we prepare our hearts for this special evening of worship, okay? Let's go before the Lord. Father, we are here this evening. We call it Good Friday. Lord, it is good. But only because we recognize the significance of your Son, Jesus Christ, being executed on that day on a Roman cross. Father, we thank you for your love for us. We know, God, that through the cross, you show your love for us. It, even while we were yet sinners, Christ Jesus died for us. Father, we are here to worship, to give all glory to your, your Son, to experience this joy of being together and remembering what you've done for us. Father, your word says that if we confess our sins, you're faithful and just to forgive us our sins, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so God, in this time, as your people, we confess, Lord, that we all have sinned. We take that sin and we look at the cross and we recognize our need for mercy. Father, we want, we want to observe this time of worship and to do it rightly. May it honor you and glorify you this evening. And we thank you. In Christ's name we pray and ask your blessing on our time. Amen. Sweet. 
Amen. What a special time of worship we, we have before us this, this evening. Really, this evening is all about remembering the cross. Remembering the cross. and We have a reason to remember what Christ did for us, don't we? We know that there were many, many, many people that died on a Roman crucifix. Uh, many people were executed that way. But when we remember Jesus, we remember the Savior, the one who is God, who took on flesh, that died on that cross for us. It's because of his death that we live. And we recognize that looking back. The cross reveals to us, just as, just as Sandy so beautifully sang, the love of God. If you were to ask me if there were one point in history, one, one thing that I could point to and be reminded of the fact that God loves me, I would say the cross and I would say that even if you are in difficult circumstances in your life, no matter what you are dealing with, you can look at the cross and know without a shadow of a doubt that if you are a believer in Christ, you are loved with an incredible love. On this Friday that we remember today, but this Friday almost 2,000 years ago, Jesus was betrayed. He was questioned by religious authorities. He was brought before Pilate. They spit on him. They mocked him. The mob yelled out, crucify him. And Pilate, finally bending to the mob's will, gave in but first had him flogged, beaten within an inch of his life. They, they mocked him. They twisted this crown of thorns and they forced it down on his head. They, they put him in a purple robes and they mocked, mocked him. The king of the Jews. And Jesus submitted to all of this. But they led him out to be crucified. By this point, his body, as I mentioned, had been flogged. It had been beaten tremendously. Normally, criminals would carry their own cross to their execution. And John indicates that Jesus did carry his cross, but being so weakened because of the beatings that he had endured... They forced another man to carry his cross for him. We know from Luke that he carried this man, Simon the Cyrene. He, he carried the cross and he carried it behind Jesus. So Jesus was right in front of him, it says in Luke. In Mark 15, 21... 
it mentions this. This man, Simon, he's, he's only mentioned in one verse in each of, the, of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. But it says in Matthew or Mark 15, 21, they forced a man coming in from the country who was passing by to carry Jesus' cross. He was Simon, a Cyrenian, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Really all we're told about that man. What it must have been like to be that close to the Savior. What it must have been like to carry his cross, the one that he had been carrying, as far as he could. We know uh, that this Simon, or we believe that he did become a believer, because uh, Mark mentions his his name, Simon the Cyrene, and it mentions Alexander, and it mentions Rufus, both his sons. And we know that Mark wrote this from Rome. And when Paul wrote to Rome in Romans 16, we see that he mentions Rufus as one of the leaders in the church. It seems as though this individual, Simon, this experience that, that he had that day carrying Jesus' cross, it left him a changed man. He was changed forever. And he would pass on his faith to his son, Rufus. Why did Mark mention these? Sometimes Mark doesn't mention people's names. He just leaves them anonymous. But here he not only mentions Simon, he mentioned both his son's name. Why? I believe it was because this man Simon was uh, such an incredible eyewitness, such an up-close and personal eyewitness to what happened on that day. And that he was known in the churches. Folks could ask him, talk to him about his experience that day. His was a name worth mentioning because people knew of this Simon. They knew of these individuals, Simon, Alexander, and Rufus. And they would go after his eyewitness testimony, most certainly. He was so close to Jesus' suffering and death. Just for a moment, as, as we reflect, as that's what this night is for, reflecting on the cross. Think about what that must have been like. Forced to carry a criminal's cross, but he wasn't a criminal. He was the Son of God, the spotless Lamb. Think of what it must have been like to hold that cross and for him to be that close to the moment, that close to the Lord, and, and to even feel the splinters on that cross that they would nail Jesus to. Think of what it must have been like for Jesus, or for Simon, after Jesus had been beaten and bloody, and then he had tried to carry that cross. As Simon carried that cross, he would, he would have the blood of this man on him. And at the time, it may have disgusted him, but soon he would realize that it was through that precious blood that all the world, everyone who would believe in him would be saved. Think of what it must have been like to be carrying the cross to Golgotha and having the Son of God beaten to an inch of his life struggling just to walk in front of you, hearing the labored breathing of the spotless Son of God as they made that walk. Church, I don't know of anybody else in all the Scripture that later, after he would become a believer, would understand the meaning of Jesus' words as well as Simon. The words that when Jesus said, if anyone wants to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. 
Simon most definitely knew what that meant after this experience. But Mark mentions him. And he mentions him because he was an eyewitness. He was most certainly known. And he had that memory of what happened. Tonight is about remembering the cross. And even before Christ went to the cross, he knew what he was doing and he willingly went to the cross. Amen? But he emphasized the importance of us as his people throughout the ages remembering what would happen. Remember he gathered his disciples up and he passed out, he, he took the bread and the cup and remember he, he said this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And the same with the cup. This is my, my blood. The new covenant established in His blood. Christ wants us to remember it. And so it is so appropriate that as we reflect upon the cross, we observe the Lord's Supper. And as we do so, as I mentioned uh, at the beginning of the service, I'd ask if, if, if you are not yet a believer, if you've not trusted in Christ and followed Him in believer's baptism, just, um, just don't partake. I'd ask you just to let the, the cup and the bread pass. But this is a time for God's people to reflect upon what Christ has done for us. And what an incredible love we've been shown. You know, so many people, and even Simon that day, probably looked and, and felt sorry for this man, this weak man that had been beaten uh, so, so much, there in his weakness, couldn't even carry his own cross. This one that would die a lot quicker on a Roman cross than most criminals would that would hang there for sometimes days. Not Jesus. No, he had already been beaten. He was weak. Many people would see a weak man, but you know what? I believe I believe that Simon the fact that I, we have evidence that he became a believer, I believe that as he reflected on that day He realized that it wasn't weakness. He saw even through the weakness that there was great strength. There was submission and obedience even to the cross. Determination, purpose, and love. Oh, the love that's shown to us in the cross. Later, the Apostle Paul would tell husbands, he would say, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. Tells us that Jesus went to that cross for a purpose. He gave himself for his church, the bride. Jesus would talk about how he would be a good, he was a good shepherd that would lay down his life for his sheep. He did it on purpose, didn't he, church? He's so good to us. At this time, we're gonna, I'm going to have the deacons come forward and uh, we're going to prepare to distribute the elements, the bread and the cup, all in one package. What we'll do is, when you receive your, the elements, after everybody's been served and the deacons have been served, um, Pastor Blaine's going to have a word of prayer over the elements. And then, we'll take it all together, okay? 
So, deacons, you can... soaked into the wood and that's what we remember tonight before I pray I'm going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 11 beginning in verse 23 it says for I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you that the Lord Jesus on that night when he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me in the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever therefore eats the bread and drinks of the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Let's pray together. Father God, I have no words tonight that can do justice to what we are about to do together. And Lord, when this ordinance was first established some 2,000 years ago, the disciples had very little understanding of really what it represented. And we too tonight cannot fully understand the sacrifice of our Lord. But we do celebrate it. 
It's a temptation for us as we take the bread and and the juice to, to think of this as a time of mourning. But Father, we recognize tonight that we have no reason to mourn, for our Savior is alive. We have reason to celebrate. We have reason to be thankful in knowing that Jesus did not remain in the tomb. But he did shed his blood for my sins. For all of our sins, he shed his blood on that cross. And Father, I am grateful. We are a grateful people. Help us to understand what we are doing tonight. We do this in remembrance of the Lord Jesus Christ who is our Savior, who is our Lord, who is our Redeemer, who is our King. And we proclaim His gospel. We proclaim His death until He returns. So Lord, I thank You for Your body that You gave up for me and the bread that it represents. I thank You for the blood that was shed on Calvary's cross for me and what that represents. And I thank you that I have new life because of that blood. Father, as we eat this bread and drink of this cup tonight, I pray that you would both convict us and give us a sense of overwhelming joy as to what we're doing. You accomplished the victory and now I get to celebrate. We love you, dear Jesus. And tonight we celebrate what you've done for us. In your name, amen. As we partake together, reflect upon the broken body and the spilled blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until when? Until he comes. He's coming again. Amen. I'd invite you to stand and we're going to worship as we continue to reflect upon the cross. We're going to have the opportunity to worship through the old rugged cross. Let's worship this evening.
okay with this, I want to do one more song uh, together tonight. And no, it's not going to be on the wall, and that's okay. Um, because it's words are what I want you to focus on. And that is called The Power of the Cross. And uh, it comes from some scripture from it. It comes from 2 Corinthians 13, 4. And it says, He was crucified in weakness. But He lives by what? God's power. Amen. So focus on that cross tonight and focus on these words. And I hope it blesses your heart for a while we're here tonight. Yeah. Uh-huh. 
Amen. Thank you, dear Melissa. Let us never, ever forget the meaning of the cross of Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that whosoever believes in Him, He gave His Son, didn't He? For whosoever, that we would not perish, but we could have everlasting life. He's so good to us. He is so good to us. I want to invite you to come and celebrate our risen Savior on Sunday. We will gather. Uh, 8.45 is our early service. We'll have Sunday school at 10. At 11, we'll gather and uh, we'll celebrate. Our, our full cantata will be in our 11 o'clock service, and that one will be broadcast as well. But um, we've got a wonderful celebration that awaits on Sunday. Amen? Amen. God is so good to us. Brother Bill Trent, he's our deacon of the week. He's going to offer a word of prayer. Uh, and but then before you leave, we're going to be dismissed after watching a video, okay? So after Brother Bill play, prays, uh, watch this video, and then we'll, we'll leave. Let us pray. Father, we've think back 2,000 years ago when the world was in turmoil and, and you hung on that cross for us and the world darkened that day but Sunday's coming and then on Saturday as you lay in that tomb the disciples were in such disarray in the world too but Sunday's coming. And Sunday morning, ah, joy comes in the morning. You arose that day. You fulfilled what you came to do for us. And because of that, we can live forever. Because of that, we know that you're in our lives. So, Father, you are so wonderful to us. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this service. And as we go out tonight on Friday, let us go out with a smile. The world is in disarray again. The world is in turmoil. Sometimes we don't know what to expect one day to the next. But not only is Sunday coming, you're coming back again for us. You told us you was. You made us that promise. So, Father, let us reflect on this. For our joy comes in the morning. Sunday is coming. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. It's Friday. Jesus is praying. Peter is asleep. Judas is betraying. But Sunday is coming. It's Friday. Pilate's struggling. The council is conspiring. The crowd is vilifying. They don't even know that Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The disciples are running like sheep without a shepherd. Mary is crying. Peter is denying. But they don't know that Sundays are coming. It's Friday. The Romans beat my Jesus. They robe him in scar. They crown him with thorns. But they don't know that Sundays come. It's Friday. See Jesus walking to Calvary, his blood dripping, his body stumbling, and his spirit's burden. But you see, it's only pride. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The world's winning. People are sinning. And evil's grinning. It's Friday. 
the soldiers nailed my Savior's hands to the cross. They nailed my Savior's feet to the cross. And then they raised him up next to criminals. It's Friday. But let me tell you something. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The disciples are questioning what has happened to their king. And the Pharisees are celebrating that their scheming has been achieved. But they don't know. It's only Friday. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. He's hanging on the cross, feeling forsaken by his father, left alone and dying. Can nobody save him? Oh, it's Friday, but Sunday's come. It's Friday, the earth trembles, the sky grows dark, my king yields his spirit. It's Friday, hope is lost, death has won, sin has come, and Satan's just a laugh. It's Friday, Jesus is buried, a soldier stands guard, and a rock is rolled into place. But it's Friday. It is only Friday. Sunday is a coming. Amen. Church, Sunday's coming. And with that, we will be dismissed. Thank you for being here this evening. It's been wonderful to worship together. You're dismissed. Thank you.